Hey, I'm Brian Goulet of the Goulet Pen Company, and I already shot a video on the 2013 Premier LE, the Macassar Ebonite, and it was kind of more of a touchy-feely, emotional kind of video with me kind of telling the story in the background and stuff, and I'm, I'm glad I did that. It was kind of, I was kind of going for a different style video there than my traditional videos that I've done in the past where it's me in my office with the face shot and the hands and showing you the pen and stuff. So I, I thought that that was a cool video, but I also wanted to kind of do a traditional one showing you the pen kind of up close. And I wanted to show you some of the other uh, Premier LEs I've done in the past too. So that's what this video is for. If you're interested in the Premier LE, stick around and I'll show it to you. All right, so I'm gonna break open a, one of my kind of pen vaults of sorts here. I've got uh, this one case that I use to store. I've got a bunch of Twisbees over here, some older 540s and stuff, ROC. Uh, I've got some Edisons here, but I've got kind of my uh, little limited Edison collection here, which I'm sure over time will become even more valuable to me. Uh, but anyway, I've got the Encore, which is a now discontinued pen. I've got uh, the 2012 limited edition Encore that was the Fleck Tortoise. This is one of the, my favorite materials. I'm thrilled that we were able to make that one happen. Uh, but down here, I've got the Premiers. So the significance of the Premier, just to summarize it, is that um, it was the first collaborative pen that we came up with, period, uh, at Goulet Pens. We worked with Edison. It was the first collaboration with Edison. Brian Gray and I have kind of a similar backstory in terms of how we got into the pen world. So it was really cool that we were able to collaborate. Um, it was also the first Edison production line pen. It was the first pen that was not sold as a purely custom pen direct from Edison. So there's a lot of firsts with those pens, and so we called it the Premier. We thought it would be appropriate. It's been a big hit, really popular popular pen style. I love the design. Uh, just, a, just a home run all the way. Um, so just to kind of summarize some of the pens that I've got here, I'll go ahead and take them out because these are kind of special and worth talking about. I wanted to um, just kind of share each of these with you because uh, you know, this is the kind of thing that you're not going to see anywhere else because these are uh, some pens that only I have in my possession. So uh, the first one that I have here um, this one is not incredibly special, but it is uh, something that you can't find anymore. This is the Satin Black. I'm about to get it in the frame there. This is the Satin Black Premier, and this uh, is a pen that's near and dear to my heart because it's one of the original three colors that we came out with for this pen. Uh, we have kind of an inside joke, Brian Gray, myself, and my wife, Rachel. We each chose a color, a, one of our favorite colors, to offer this pen model in when we first came out. And so we kind of had like an unofficial uh, contest between the three of us as to which pen would be more popular. Um, and as it turns out, the satin black was ever so slightly less popular than mine, which was the cobalt blue. Of course, the cappuccino is Rachel's pick, and that one just blew ours out of the water. And uh, we, she never lets us forget it, but <laughs> this was Brian Gray's pick, and, and I never let him forget that mine was ever so slightly more popular than his. But anyway, this pen, this pen is now discontinued too, but it's got kind of a cool story behind it. I, I love this uh, kind of satin black look. It was meant to kind of mimic uh, ebonite, and that's, that was the goal with this material. Um, the next one that I have is one that uh, Brian Gray had made this special for me. It was kind of after the premiere had been a big hit and, you know, the collaboration had really been a success. We had a successful business partnership. He has this um, wine uh, acrylic here, or it might even be Lucite, I'm not sure. Forgive me, Brian, for not remembering exactly what type of material this is, but it's this wine that has this really intense kind of um, pearlescence in it really cool material. I really like it. And then this is before Edison offered italic nibs. Brian actually ground this down to a uh, fine stub, probably about a 0.9 stub uh, for me out of a broad nib. And so this is kind of a special pen because he made this, you know, just for me. So that's really kind of cool. This, this is a pen that you would, you could probably buy this arrangement of pen from Brian, but you're gonna pay a custom price for it. But even still, it's just got some kind of significance to me. Uh, then the next one we have here was the Premier LE, the first Premier LE that we ever had. We actually launched this one not five months, four months after the premiere launched. Um, it was such a success and, and we had been toying with the idea of doing a limited run of pens 
um, of doing something in ebonite. And this, this material is a big hit. My biggest regret with this one was that we didn't make more of them. We only made 50 out of this original batch and uh, they sold in about two, two and a half weeks and they were gone. And I, I mean, at the time, we were not that big of a company. We were still working out of our garage. And so, uh, you know, Brian Gray was out of his garage. And so it was really just kind of, um, you know, kind of just a couple of good old boys that were just making these pens. And so we had no idea that we'd sell 50 of these things that quickly. So I really kind of regret that I didn't make more. And if you're noticing here, the engraving says Edison Nouveau Premier LEAP. That AP stands for artist proof. So this was actually the first one that was made. Um, it was before number one, if you will. This is the artist proof. These are the that's that's how Brian Gray engraves the samples of pens that we are going to be doing whenever we come out with a limited run. Um, he'll engrave AP in it for me and let me keep it, which is super cool of him. So it's an ebonite pen. You know, oh, I don't even have a nib in there. How about that? <laughs> Whoops. I swap my nibs out a lot. I'm sort of like, you know, uh, Arnold Palmer with golf clubs. You know, he's always changing them up. I'm always taking my pens apart and swapping nibs and stuff. Uh, but anyway, so uh, that was the first premiere. And so that was kind of a lesson of like, okay, you know, we, we, when we do limited editions, we definitely want to keep it to a certain number. We engrave the number on the pen, you know, instead of the AP, we would, we would engrave, you know, number one of 100 or, or one of 50 or whatever it is. Um, and so the next one that we came out with was actually later that year, it was the Cherry Cordial Ebonite, and that's this guy right here. Um, the blue is a little more subtle in this Ebonite than the red is in the Cherry Cordial. And uh, let me see if I have a nib in this one. Yeah, I do. Okay, so this one came with the two-tone. Um, and then, you know, it's got a little more intense red color, red and black. It was a pen that we launched around Christmas time, so it was kind of the cherry cordial. I always think of like cherry cordial type candy and stuff like that around the holidays, good, nice little stocking stuff or Christmas gift kind of thing. Um, you know, went with gold accents because we'd done a lot of rhodium trim on the other pens. So it was kind of cool. Again, I got the artist proof in there, very, very cool. Um, these pens, we decided to make 100 of them. And so, uh, you know, that um, they took a much longer to sell though. We sold 50 of them fairly soon, you know, but we thought that going off the popularity of this pen, that 100 would, you know, be a much more accurate number, but it took a while. It took, let's see here, almost, uh, it was well over a year and a half, I think, before these all sold, all 100 of them. Not because it's not a popular pen, uh, but just because we, we really didn't know how to gauge how many to make. And it's always kind of tough when you're doing limited edition stuff like that. How many do you make? How quick is it going to sell? Because, you know, you just really never know sometimes. So what we decided to do, and I'll show you the, the Encore one, because that's what we did the following year. So the Encore and, uh, you know, artist proof in there too. This is the, that, this material is just like, it's like glowing. Uh, it kind of reminds me of the, you know, rock in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. <laughs> Not an appropriate, uh, you know, uh, analogy or tie together or anything like that, but, um, and I got a nib in there too. So it's got the smaller nib in there, the Encore. This is now discontinued, um, which maybe makes it even more near and dear to my heart, but um, it's got the little uh, finial on the top there too. So that's kind of cool. So, uh, you know, the Encore was its own kind of special pen, and I really had wanted to use this material in it. I was in love with this Fleck Tortoise, really great stuff. And so I was thrilled that Brian was able to acquire enough of this to use. Um, what we did with this one was we decided to um, do a, a batch release. And rather than make, making a certain number ahead of time and then just whether it took two weeks or two years to sell, what we decided to do with this one was to have an open buy period. We set it for, I think it was around two weeks, um, around November of 2012. And what we decided to do was just have this open buy period. As many people that wanted to buy it, you would lock it in. And then as soon as we closed the buy period, Brian would make all the pens, engrave them, send them out, done. And that's how we did it. And it was successful. You know, we sold, uh, I, I want to say it was 77, 72 pens. I honestly don't remember exactly how many it was. Probably could have looked that up ahead of time. But anyway, that's not the point. The point is that um, everybody who wanted the pen that could get it within the buy period could get it. 
you know, it wasn't uh, it wasn't like they sold out or anything. So whoever wanted it could scrounge up the money and, and get the pen. So we had good success with that one. Brian has had a lot of success doing that with other types of group buys and releases and things. Um, in his, uh, you know, uh, FPN group buys and other things he's done for other forums and whatnot. So when we came around to do another limited edition pen, that's how we decided to do it as well. So when it, when it came time for 2013 and we decided on the material, um, we, we were leaning heavily towards another ebonite, mainly just because, you know, we don't do that many ebonites. There aren't that many production ebonite pens out there. You know, Platinum has a 3776 ebonite that's, you know, $600. And, you know, so there's, there's some very expensive ebonite pens out there. And so we thought, you know, $200 for uh, an Edison ebonite was, was really not bad. So that's what we went with. Um, and this particular color, you know, we chose and named because it looks a whole lot like um, this wood that's called Macassar ebony. Um, ebony is a very dark, very dense, heavy wood. Um, I had worked with it, Brian Gray had worked with it previously in each of our, you know, pen making and woodworking um, ventures that we had done before, you know, I did it before I got into, you know, retailing, before Brian Gray got into, you know, custom pen making like he does now. Uh, you know, we had both worked with this wood before and this, this kind of wood grain pattern in the ebonite and then the, um, you know, just the darkness, the color, it's, it's really just looks a lot like that. Of course, the disadvantage of wood is that it's easily damaged. You know, when you're talking about, you know, threading here, if you can't thread that fine on wood and have it hold up over time, you know, in the wood, it's going to patina really heavily with your oil, with your hand oils. Um, it's going to stain if you get ink on it and, and expose a lot of ink to it, subject to moisture, it's subject to, you know, damage being dropped, it's subject to moisture fluctuations, so you can get cracking, especially with uh, ebony. Ebony is a wood that is really prone to have a lot of shrinkage and a lot of cracking with changes in relative humidity. So there's a lot of drawbacks to making pens out of wood and both Brian and I had had a lot of experience doing that. So to be able to get a pen that really mimics the look and even kind of the feel of that, you know, polished wood, but not have any of the drawbacks of the durability and, and such uh, in a pen was really kind of a plus for us. So that's really what prompted us to use this one. It was a new ebonite that Brian had recently discovered um, due to his, um, uh, supplier that he had lined up. I'll show you that it's got a bit of a star pattern in the top there. So that's kind of neat. If I can get the camera to focus on it. Yeah. It's really kind of cool. So it's got, you know, this dark black color with this kind of tan beige um, grain in it. Really cool. So uh, you know, this was kind of neat, so I was glad to be able to offer this. Um, I'd never actually done a full-on, like, premiere review or anything like that. I've kind of touched on it before. Um, so to go over, like, some of the details here, the premiere, it's available in uh, now an extra fine, fine, medium, broad, uh, as well as a 1.1 and 1.5 millimeter stub. So um, they're made by Yovo in Germany, the nibs are. It's a number six size nib, so it's a pretty good size. You can see here with my Angry Bird Band-Aid on my thumb. If you're wondering about that, I damaged it during construction and it's about two months ago and it looks just absolutely hideous, so I'd rather put a Band-Aid on it than show you <laughs> what it is in the video. Um, the pen is postable. It is a cartridge converter pen. It uses standard international. Uh, cartridges and converters. You know, very easy to do. You can also convert the pen to eyedropper. So you just throw a little bit of silicone grease here on the threads and you can fill this thing up and it'll hold a really good volume of ink. Um, you know, over two milliliters of ink. Plenty, plenty of ink for you to go about your business. Um, and so uh, for those of you not familiar with Edison nibs, they are interchangeable out of this pen. So you literally just have to unscrew it out of here 
and voila, you wanna take the converter out when you do that, but very easy to do, it just threads right into the section there. Never touch it at the tip, just you always wanna grab it by the base, but easy to do. It's one of the great thing about Edison's, you can get Edison nibs separately from this pen, so you can you know, get a stub nib and an extra fine, and depending on what you're trying to do, you can switch it out, and so you can get a $200 pen, but for an extra $25 for a nib, you can essentially get a whole extra pen you know, just by swapping out the nib. So it greatly increases the utility of it. So that covers the, um, the pen. Um, one more thing to touch on with the nib is that um, if you've never written with an Edison nib, um, it's, it's what Brian Gray likes to call smooth with a hint of feedback. So basically it's a very smooth nib, no scratchiness to it at all. Brian checks them all. He's been doing nib stuff for a long time. It's really good. And um, the feedback that he's talking about is a little bit of resistance. So it's not going to be glassy smooth like slipping and sliding all over the page. It's going to give you just a little bit of resistance to kind of ground you and give you some sense of control as you're writing the pen. But overall just very, very reputable, great uh, reputation that Brian Gray has for the work that he does and for Edison. So hopefully that covers all the questions you have. This this video uh, is really for more of my traditional style. You know, I'm still going on kind of long here, but if you are interested in this pen or if you're kind of, you know, interested in kind of the history of the Edison LEs that we've done, the Edison Nouveau LEs, you know, I thought it would be something kind of neat to share, some information that you wouldn't be able to get anywhere else and kind of tell my backstory on it. Um, I hope you appreciate it, um, and uh, yeah, that's all I got, so enjoy. <laughs> if you have any other questions about the Premier LE or any other pens for that matter, you can always hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube, or the blog. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, right on.